Hi friends, Itheria here, and I've been playing healer ever since I started the game back in December of 2019. While I'm by no means the best healer in the game, I do feel that I have learned a lot about healer in that time, especially since starting my YouTube channel, and I feel ready to share my expertise with perhaps some newer players or just people that are new to healer and maybe are struggling a little. So I've structured this video in three parts, uh, low level healing, general tips, and then advanced healing, which is for people who are starting to get comfortable with healing and are ready to sort of take things to the next level. So let's get started with the low level healing. And by low level, I really mean a beginner healer. This is somebody who has just started the game, who has just started playing healer and really doesn't know much about what they're supposed to do or how to heal in this game. So let's just get right into it. First of all, you should know that Final Fantasy XIV is a little bit different from other MMOs in that healers are expected to DPS. Once you get to endgame, you will realize that there is actually not that much outgoing damage. In fact, in dungeons, you will be doing a lot more healing when the tank pulls wall to wall. You'll be healing up the mob damage versus the boss, which doesn't have that much outgoing damage at all. But that's something that you can actually worry about later. When you are very new to healing, Healing, what you need to focus on is healing itself. Healing should be your top priority. So if you're having trouble balancing healing with DPSing, just focus on healing first and you can learn the other things later. Always remember that you are your top priority. So when it comes to who you should heal first, the answer is yourself, then the tank, and then the DPS. Of course, if your HP is in a safe place, then you would want to prioritize the tank. What is actually considered safe? I would say that having above 50% HP is a pretty safe range to be in generally. Now, this will depend a little bit on the dungeon raid trial or whatever it may be that you are doing, but Typically, once yourself, another party member, or the entire party has dropped to about 50% HP, you will want to heal everyone up. The only time that you would generally need to heal sooner would be if there is a lot of outgoing damage. So for instance, when a tank pulls mobs wall to wall, they're usually taking a lot of damage. It's actually easier to heal this at end game than it is when you are a low level player. When you're a low level player and the tank pulls a sizable group of mobs, you're basically going to be wanting to spam cure one or cure two or whatever heal skill it is that you have at this level. In terms of party-wide damage, again, if there is damage that is going to be outgoing consistently, sometimes there are skills that will hit like five times or so before they stop. Um, in other cases, you may take a raid-wide with another one almost directly after. Those are instances that you're going to want to heal right away because the party can't really take a second hit without being healed first, but I think you'll see more of those mechanics at endgame than you would in any of the low-level dungeons or trials. Another important thing to note at low levels is that Cure 2 is better than Cure 1, similarly Benefic 2 better than Benefic 1, and Medica 2 is better than Medica 1. The reason that Medica 2 is better than Medica 1 is that it is a regen, which means that over 15 seconds it's giving back probably double if not triple the amount of HP that Medica 1 will give. Of course, these are again situational. If there is going to be outgoing damage soon after the first hit, is taken, then you may be better off using Medica 1. However, if you have time between outgoing damage, which often you will, then you'll want to use Medica 2. If you are playing White Mage or Astrologian, then you should be using your regen skill on the tank while they are pulling mobs. For White Mage, I'm pretty sure it's actually just called regen, whereas for Ast, it is called Aspected Benefic. Using regen used to make the mobs aggro to the healer, but that is no longer the case as of 6.2, so you don't have to worry about it. However, I would still recommend that you pop sprint and try to keep up with your tank because once they get to the end of their pull, they're going to have a lot of mobs suddenly smacking them and you need to be there so that you can mitigate or heal them. You're going to see a lot of your tanks pop sprint because it helps them take less hits from the mobs, so you're going to want to use sprint to be able to keep up with them. If you ever get the chance to see a comfortable healer play, you'll probably see a lot of them pop sprint and even run a little bit ahead of the tank, stopping before each group of mobs. 
While you're running, it's a good idea to DPS the mobs. If you're playing White Mage or Astrologian, then you're probably just going to have to use your damage over time skill. But if you're on Scholar or Sage, then you will have some instant cast skills, especially AoEs, that you can use while you are running. If you're playing a shield healer, then you should also be putting a shield on the tank before they run to grab all the mobs. Luckily, shields do not make the mobs aggro to you unless you put the shield on as the tank is already grabbing them but has not fully taken their aggro. This is because the shields usually have a heal with them as well and that heal will send the aggro to you, but it's really the same situation where you want to try and get the shield on before they even grab a mob, but if you end up getting it on them while they're grabbing the mobs, just run up to the tank so that they can easily take the mobs from you. Finally, I want to talk about the skill Esna. This is a skill that you'll get, I believe, at level 10, and it basically allows you to cleanse debuffs from your party members and yourself. So things like slow, stun, silence, paralyze, these are all things that you as a healer are responsible for removing from your teammates. However, there is one in specific that we should talk about, and it's called Doom. If Doom is not Asunad, it will kill your party member. While you do want to be sure to Asuna other stuff, like Slow or Paralyze especially, they're probably not going to kill your teammates. If they do, it's going to be more of a coincidence or a chance. Whereas Doom, that is exactly what Doom does. If you don't get rid of Doom before the timer ends, the player dies. Now, the kind of annoying thing about Doom is it's not really consistent in how it works. Sometimes Doom can be Esunet off. Other times, you have to heal the player to full in order to remove Doom. And then finally, we have the one outlier where Doom is removed by standing on something, such as in the Temple of Karn, where you have to stand on the glowing square to remove Doom. That has nothing to do with the healer and everything to do with the player, but I felt that it was worth mentioning. So these are sort of the main things I wanted to talk about with the low level healing, so let's move on to general tips. First, I want to talk about another habit that healers need to have, and this is using lucid dreaming. You want to use this when your mana hits about 7 or 8k. I've heard some people say that 8k is really where you want to be using this. Now, some healing jobs are going to rely on lucid dreaming much more, white mage especially, as well as sage. Whereas scholar and astrologian, they're a little bit better at keeping mana up with their own skills. Now, every single healer job does have skills that give them mana back. For White Mage, it's a size. For Astrologian, oh my god, Astrodyne and the cards, it's ridiculous. For Sage, any of your spark skills. For Scholar, either flow. But still, you do want to be using Lucid Dreaming pretty much on every healer except for Astrologian. It's really the only one you don't need it on. But otherwise, yes, you should be using it about 7 to 8k mana to make sure that you are never running out of mana and you always have plenty to spare. Now, Final Fantasy XIV is really different from other games in that healing here is actually something you need to do proactively rather than reactively. I would say that White Mage is really the only job that can be a reactive healer because it relies on just big kind of fat heals, but even on White Mage you can benefit from being proactive. Now, it does take some time to become a proactive rather than reactive player. This is because you simply need to get used to how the game works as well as how specific dungeons work. If you don't know the mechanics, it can be really hard to be proactive. However, one way that you can be proactive is simply to watch the boss's bar. The boss will have a cast bar, and if you see it casting something, you may be able to infer that it is casting a raid wide, so you might decide to precast a skill like Medica 2. You'll get better at this timing as you go, but you want to aim for having the Medica go off immediately after the actual boss's skill goes off. Again, it takes some practice, but you'll definitely get better at timing this as you play. Another big thing about being proactive is mitigation, and that's probably the most important thing about being proactive, because mitigation is something that has to happen before the boss attack. There is no option to mitigate after. You cannot be reactive with mitigation. So once again, watch those cast bars, and I'll talk about this in more depth later, but using off-global cooldown skills, especially for mitigation, is going to help you be proactive rather than reactive. When I was planning this video, I did reach out some feelers to see what sorts of things people were having trouble with. 
and I was told that people had a lot of trouble splitting their attention. They found it difficult to both do the mechanics and heal, and found themselves often tunnel visioning on one or the other. So first of all, I think to address this, you need to set your priorities straight. Your priority is keeping the party alive. You are a healer. I know that this game definitely wants healers to DPS, which I mentioned already. However, you are still a healer at the end of the day. So especially if you are new enough to be having this issue of tunnel visioning, then I think that's what you need to remember is that healing is your first priority. Of course, you can't do so if you are not alive, so you do have to run out of the orange puddles on the floor. But I would say don't necessarily worry about where your DPS is at if you're still struggling to do mechanics and heal at the same time. Also, you want to keep yourself alive because you can't help the party if you are not alive. So if you are struggling to heal while doing mechanics, then resolve the mechanic before you heal. It will also help for you to know what skills you have that are instant cast. This is where it becomes very important to read your tooltips and maybe even practice and mess with your skills outside of dungeons. So some examples of instant cast skills would be things like a size, a flatus rapture or a flatus solace, indomitability for scholar, lost rate for scholar, essential dignity on astrologian, actually astrologian has a ton of instant cast heals. They also have celestial intersection and opposition, as well as lady of crowns, and they even have light speed to make basically all of their skills instant cast if needed. Sage has Torical, Druical, and I believe Ixacol is the AoE heal. So just figure out which of your heals you can press and they don't require a cast because that means that you can use them while you're moving out of mechanics. Finally, something that can help you both heal and focus on the mechanics is to adjust your HUD layout. You want to have everything important sort of clustered in the middle of the screen. I don't mean the exact middle. It's kind of going to be like a TV with a border around the edge. I usually prefer to use Shift F to focus target on the boss, and I have that relatively close to the middle of my screen so that I can always see what the boss is casting. Now, I have muscle memory for all of my skills and know where they are in my bar, so I don't necessarily always have to look at them. This sort of thing obviously comes with practice, but having your HUD laid out so that you can see people's HP as well as what the boss is casting can help immensely because everything will be sort of in your line of sight. And there are lots of videos about arranging your HUD layout on YouTube, so I would suggest that you go and find one that works for you. Finally, let's go into advanced healing. This is for people who are pretty comfortable healing, they got the gist of it, and they know where their skills are, and they're at a point where they're like, how do I become better at the game? So something that literally every healer is going to do until they learn about it is overhealing, and it is exactly as it sounds. You are healing more than is actually necessary, and the detriment to this is to your DPS. As I have stated, Final Fantasy XIV is a DPS-centric game, unfortunately, for us healers, which means that if healing isn't actually needed, we shouldn't be doing it. And when you consider that trials and raids are always going to have two healers, and if they're not a savage mode especially, there is often a lot of overhealing happening because both people are hitting their heal skills when really only one healer is needed for that type of content. And when you're in savages, DPS is especially important, especially Especially if your team is struggling with it a little bit, having the healers offering up extra DPS can be actually helpful. So especially in a high-end or end-game environment, you want to be working with your other healer to ensure that you're not both just wasting heal skills. Maybe one of you is able to heal this big AoE. Maybe you use Macrocosmos or you just let the pure healer take care of it and you, as the barrier healer, just keeps DPSing. Of course, you do want to offer up your sacred soil first, but just keep DPSing. So yeah, focus on how much you are healing and ask yourself, did I actually need to heal that? Because if the answer is no, you'll get to a point where you sort of learn with different dungeons and with your own playstyle how much you're overhealing and how much you actually need to be healing, and you can get to a point where you're only overhealing on occasion because it's still going to happen to all of us, but you will still be much better off because you'll be doing more DPS and again, just sort of thinking about it will help you become better about it. Just being aware of it will help you be a better player. 
And next is the big one, which is off-global cooldown skills and especially off-global cooldown heals. These are the heals that you want to be using because they can be weaved in with your DPS skills and they don't require the global cooldown. So first of all, what is the global cooldown? I want you to cast your skill glare, stone, whatever place that you are at. After you cast that, you will see a little gray sort of clock type motion over the skill and you'll see it over all of your skills. That is the global cooldown. Now if you're playing white mage, for instance, and you cast glare, you will notice that a size is still available to be used. That is because a size is an off global cooldown skill. Now you can play around with this on whatever healer that you are playing to figure out which ones are OGCDs or you can actually just look at each skill because the ones that are off global cooldown will be marked as abilities, but the ones that are on the global cooldown will be marked as spells. But still, sometimes just playing around with them can get you a better sense of how they work. So back to why this is important. It is the same reason as avoiding overhealing is important. If you are using off global cooldown heals as often as you can, then you're going to be a more efficient healer and you're going to be able to do more DPS. Now, sometimes you are going to be forced to use global cooldown skills, especially if you're playing white mage. White mage only has a handful of OGCT heals in comparison to the other healers, which means that you may sometimes have to use something like Medica 2 or a flat to solace or rapture. Now, the cool thing about the lilies is that they actually do give you that DPS back. They're considered DPS neutral because you you can use a Flatus Misery after using three of your lilies. So the way that the skills are set up for White Mage does make up for it a bit better. But if you're playing something like Astrologian or Scholar or Sage, then you're still going to be wanting to focus on using off global cooldown skills when possible. And this is also true not just for the heals, but for the mitigation. So if you are playing Scholar, Funnily enough, uh, you kind of want to avoid using a skill like Sucker for mitigation. You're going to want to instead use skills like Sacred Soil or Seraph or even Expedient. Similarly for Sage, you're going to be wanting to use things like Caracol or Holos or Panheima. And I also want to note that Caracol is a fantastic skill because it offers up a regen as well as a shield, and you can pair it with things like physis, so you have another regen plus physis too, which is what you'll have at endgame, even increases healing potency. So you can pair different skills in ways that, again, allow for efficient healing, but it's all off global cooldown and you can just keep smacking that DPS. This is basically what you want to be doing at endgame. This is what people are going to consider as optimizing and what people are going to consider as the optimal way of playing. Now, I do want to note that if you're only doing, you know, endgame things that are not like savage or ultimate modes, it's not going to matter that much. Even in extremes, it's not going to matter that much, but it is certainly good to know about off global cooldown versus global cooldown skills and how to use them efficiently, which is really to just prioritize the off global cooldown ones. Now, I should say that even though you want to prioritize off global cooldown skills, it doesn't mean that you should 100% avoid using the GCD skills or that you should never ever use them. For instance, Scholar has a really cool global cooldown option. It's kind of a chain of skills, but you use recitation and then you use adloquium and then you spread the adloquium to your whole team using deployment tactics. The reason this is such a good combo, even though it uses the global cooldown, is because it gives you an incredibly fat shield. And you're also going to be in instances where you may be struggling a little bit. And if you're struggling and you want to pair Sacred Soil with a Sucker Shield, or you want to pair a Caracol with the Eucrasian Prognosis, then do it. You know, it's all about context. Obviously, you do want to prioritize your off-global cooldown skills, but if you need to use global cooldown skills, use them. At the end of the day, if you're keeping your party alive, that is what is most important. And I really want to emphasize this idea of just use the skill, because I used to be a very 
quote-unquote defensive healer. That's what I would call myself because I would save my best skills like benediction for a rainy day. I was like, oh, I might need this at some point and I don't want it to be in like a three minute cooldown. So even if somebody's HP got super low, I would use like Tetragrammaton instead, which is fine. You know, if you don't have Benediction, you can pair Tetragrammaton with an Aflatus Solace or whatever the heck you want to do. But usually you want to pick the most efficient heal you have. So if somebody is really low, really, really low, Benediction, and then you can get back to DPSing and you have just healed more efficiently than you would have if you did the other option, which would be Tetragrammaton, etc., etc. It's really all about what you have available. Just use it because the OGCD skills are always more efficient. Try to use your most efficient heal. Don't save it for a rainy day like I did because trust me, you are going to have other things in your kit still available to help you if somebody else ends up getting low with HP and you're almost never alone. There's almost always a second healer. So those are all of the things I have to say about healing for now. I hope this was helpful for new and budding healers. And if you have any questions or any tips, then please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to leave a sacrifice for Lord Algorithm in the form of a like, comment, share, or subscribe. And thank you so much if you watched this whole video through. Bye!